This video is going to cover the skill of administering glucagon for the uh, newly added EMT skill to the Ohio uh, scope of practice for our EMT basics. So this video will only cover the skill. It's not going to cover any protocol, uh, but we'll go over how to reconstitute the drug and administer the IM injection. So you're going to need a couple things to get started. Um, today we're going to be using an orange as our patient, but you'll need an alcohol pad. You'll need your medication, a blunt fill needle, your IM injection needle, um, and for IM injections, I use 21 to 23 gauge needles that are either one to one and a half inches long. So this is a 22 gauge needle that's one and one half inches. So that would be appropriate for the IM injection. And then you'll need to choose a syringe. So glucagon is going to reconstitute to one ml. So we need um, anywhere between a one ml syringe to a three ml syringe uh, for demonstration, I'm going to be using the 3 ml syringe. So first thing we do when we open up our medication, you'll see that you have two vials. Um, and so the cap is removed because this is my demonstration one. So um, I've already taken the cap off that vial. Uh, but you'll have a cap or a vial of sterile water, and then you'll have a vial that has a powdered disc in it. So glucagon does solidify if it's um, reconstituted for a long time. So it's something we need to reconstitute right before we administer it. Uh, so the first vial that we'll be using is the one with the white cap, um, which will be your sterile water vial. And so usually this comes with the cap on it. Uh, that keeps the top of the surface of the vial sterile. And so you would just pop that right off when you're ready to administer, um, reconstitute your medication. So I'm going to take my 3 ml syringe and I'm going to apply my blunt fill needle to the end of it so I can draw up this sterile water out of the vial. To do that, there's 1 ml of sterile water in this vial, so I'm going to draw up 1 ml of air uh, so I can replace the volume in that vial and make it a little easier to draw up. So I'm going to just stab the rubber top with the needle. Um, if you had taken the cap off previously of the vial, you'll need to clean it with your alcohol prep pad. Once I've inserted my blunt tip fill needle, I'm gonna push in the air, and then I can flip my vial over where it's more up and down, and I'm gonna to wanna to draw the medication out. So when you do this, I'll actually flip it um, kind of vertically, and I'll move my needle down towards the end of the vial so it's in the liquid and I can draw the liquid up in my syringe. So it should be about one ml. Sometimes there is a little bit more. So then I push the air out of the syringe. You can see I end up with one ml of liquid. So now I wanna put that liquid into my powder so I can reconstitute the medication. So we're going to just, like the last one, remove the, the topper there. We're going to stick our needle in into the vial through that rubber stopper. And we're going to go ahead and push in our air, or sorry, our liquid that we drew out of the previous vial. I pull back an ml of air because, again, it's made to hold a certain volume of um, liquid. So I'm just um, since I put liquid in, I'm taking air out so I can kind of keep the volume in the vial the same. Now I need to mix this powder and water together. So don't shake the medication. You'll just want to gently roll it in your hands. If we shake it, it gets very bubbly and it makes it a little difficult to draw up. So once you have it uh, rolled in your hands a few times, you just wanna look through the window on the side to make sure that it is, um, all the powder is dissolved into the liquid and our medication will be ready to draw up and administer. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw the medication back up into the syringe. So I know it's about one ml, so I've pulled up one ml of air. I'm gonna put my needle through the stopper push in my air, and now I can draw out my medication. Uh, 
So I've drawn up all the liquid into my syringe. I do need to get rid of some air that I have in my syringe. So I'm just gonna turn my syringe vertically and push the air out through the top and I'm left with my one ml of medication. So we're going to administer this medication um, into the muscle. So there's two spots pre-hospitally that we typically use. One is the vastus lateralis muscle, which is the outside of the thigh. Um, that's where we would give the EpiPen. Uh, since this is only one ml of fluid, it can fit into the deltoid muscle and that's easily accessed um, pre-hospitally. Um, we can do a better uh, job getting to the site and cleaning it. Again, you should be putting all of your sharps in a sharps container. Um, so the way that I find the deltoid muscle is I cut my hand over someone's shoulder and I use my thumb and my index finger to squeeze the sides of the shoulders and it'll kind of pop out that deltoid muscle. But just think about where you get a flu shot or a tetanus shot, it's the same area. We do wanna clean that area with our alcohol prep pad. And then we can go ahead and put on our IM injection needle to give the medication. Now when we give this medication, we wanna be going in at a 90 degree angle. Uh, straight into the muscle. For the deltoid muscle, I go in about three quarters to an inch deep into the muscle. Uh, once we inject um, into the muscle, we can actually push down the plunger and inject the medications. So it might um, squirt back out of me since this is an orange, but we'll give it a shot. So 90 degree angle, about an inch in, I'm gonna push in my medication and then release my needle. Um, and it didn't squirt back out of me. And then these have a safety mechanism where we can um, lock our sharps there. You don't need to massage the muscle or anything like that. We would just watch for uh, our patient to improve in about one to two minutes as that medication takes effect.